One of those days when you can't find a good spot to back into. Took me about 15 minutes to do this. I'm still far from being good at backing up. The most diesel fuel I've put in. Crazy, huh? 132 gallons, $716.30. What's going on my people? So it's the end of 10 weeks at uh, Schneider uh, of me driving actually, uh, including the training. It's actually been three months. So I've been at uh, Schneider for over uh, three months. It's been an interesting ride. Um, so for two weeks in a row, uh, I've driven over 2,400 miles, which is pretty good. Um, it's tiring. Uh, my on-duty time plus driving time have equaled close to 70 hours in five days. I'm hitting about 13 to 14 hours of working each day for five days straight. And then it allows me to come home and uh, take the two days off uh, for the reset. And the company has been really good about um, allowing me to take that weekend off every week. I haven't had a week where I was stranded in another location where I couldn't get back in time and I couldn't do my reset. So hopefully that continues. I've heard horror stories about uh, drivers that get stranded and uh, they have to be in the boonies and they're basically stuck in their truck because they have nothing nothing to do other than the stuff that they have in their truck, which might be a TV or, you know, whatever, your tablet or whatever they use, a computer. Um, yeah, but I haven't had that situation. But one of the one of the things that irked me this week was when I looked at my uh, pay statement. Um, when I drove two thousand four hundred miles, they only calculated uh, nineteen hundred and forty seven miles or something like that, nineteen hundred plus miles, right? And they shorted me almost five hundred miles, uh, basically, in my paycheck. So I reached out. Um, they're looking into it. Uh, luckily, I made uh, uh, little screenshots of each day's mileage and. Uh, my uh, driving log which has the mileage total and also has the little graph thing that shows when you were on duty when you were off duty when you were driving and whatnot and so um yeah um i took uh, pictures of each one of those for every day uh last week and you know what um i've noticed that the company sometimes they have a different way of accounting things and uh but uh initially when i first started with the company uh i thought the first paycheck was completely off and I um, kind of freaked out a little bit. I'm like, what are they doing? Why are they trying to shortchange us, you know, nickel and dining for such a big company? It didn't make sense. So anyway, I went ahead and crunched all the numbers and everything was kosher. It worked out. Uh, you know, there was a little bit of discrepancy, whether it's, you know, minor, like a few dollars here, a few dollars there. And it's not, it wasn't something to, you know, complain about or cry about. Uh, but 500 miles being out of your paycheck is a lot. For one week so um i did go ahead and send an email with the pictures of uh the screenshots of the uh of the five days you know it had, it had the breakdown and how many miles and then i told them how many my total miles would be it was like almost 2005 it was 2450 or something like that and so uh they're gonna look into it you know it, was, it wasn't even close it wasn't even like okay they're off by like 80 miles or 100 miles or something like that it was off by 500 miles that's a lot uh but one thing I did realize is that um, when they do their pay, they sometimes they're off one week and then there's a reconciliation. And then the next week or the week after, they, they give you the pay that was due from before. So they, they clean things up. And then, so if you look at it over time, usually it clears up. But uh, I have a friend that I'm talking to and he's in a weird situation where uh, he made a claim uh, like three weeks ago and and uh, the manager, uh, the driving manager basically looked at it and said, yeah, okay, uh, we'll go ahead and uh, ask uh, payroll support to uh, fix this. And it's been, I think the past two weeks, he's looked at his check and there was no correction. Hopefully I'm not put in that situation and uh, this thing gets resolved quickly. Anyway, enough about me like griping about this. I think it'll get cleared up. I don't think they're stupid enough to, uh, you know, deliberately uh, withhold 500 miles from me. And if it's an obvious error and I have rec records, uh, they should be able to adjust, right? I'll keep you posted on that anyway. Um, which leads me to talk about uh, expectation management, right? Um, I think in, in, in all situations, you have a certain expectation. So for me, the last, uh, you know, few, several weeks, uh, I wanted to go, 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 go. And there were a lot of uh, obstacles that kind of held me back, whether it's uh, the planning that didn't come through with my assignments on time or um, me trying to take a load and it having a problem and then having to stop. Um, and in a bigger scheme of things, you know, I'm driving as much as I can, as hard as I can to try to make money. And then all of a sudden, you know, payroll doesn't calculate properly and it just sucks the wind out of you. So there is this level of energy that you're putting forward and the more obstacles you hit, 
you know you try to overcome and and succeed but at the same time there's a lot of energy that gets drained out of you when you hit some of these obstacles especially when you're mentally thinking it should be a certain way uh, but it ends up being something completely different or there's something that's kind of gets under your skin and when it gets under your skin that's when it could suck the energy out of you and so uh for all of you out there, whoever, whatever you're going through, uh, hopefully you can calm down, reset, and uh, yeah, hopefully you could overcome that situation. Because when you're going full throttle, um, things like that could totally knock the wind out of your sails, right? Okay, so uh, let's let's try this. I want to see if you agree or disagree. You know, obviously in all my videos, uh, it's from my perspective, and this is just my point of view, right? But I want to see if you agree or disagree, right? So um, I feel like uh, a lot of things have changed over the decades, and uh, especially back in the day in, in organizations in America, there was a sense of um, unity, camaraderie. Uh, it was a lot more relationship-based, uh, and it felt like, you know, um, yeah, there was, there was probably a uh, barrier to entry, but when you got in, we took care of each other. And we had each other's backs. And then um, you built trust. And then there was a sense of commitment. You belonged, right? Um, I mean, obviously, it has its pros and cons. Um, you know, sometimes people get in, in, and then the organization um, covers them and they're completely inefficient. They're, you know, they relax and take it easy and milk it. That was very common back in the day when people were milking it, right? Uh, you know, taking advantage of their privilege or their their in a situation right but at the same time if you were a part of a good team the leaders were, were usually good and that's why you were part of a good team right those leaders had that unity and they got the results and they performed right so um and there was people making sacrifice they're willing to uh go the extra mile uh morale was higher um there was a sense of believing in the cause and the greater good and uh there was a sense of pride in what you were doing uh, and it was not a self thing. It was more of a group thing as well as a self thing, right? I felt like a lot of that in successful, I mean, not the toxic companies where it was inefficient, right? But in the successful companies, a lot of that was what drove American organizations to that next level, right? Now, um, contrast that. And, you know, this is ge just generalizing because not all companies are like this, you know, and uh, I, um, you know, I don't want to like be bashing like, oh, remember the good old days and how everything sucks now. It's not like that because there was a lot of things that sucked back in the old good old days, too. Right. Let's just be honest. You know, there's a lot of stuff that was just wrong and we needed to change. Uh, but I want to see if we can, you know, like common sense could prevail and there's a, a happy medium we can find where we get the best of the good old days and the best of the new stuff. And, and you know be smart about it, you know, and uh, uh, take the good throughout the bad, right? So um, the contrast is, for the most part, in today's uh, organizations and society, it's, uh, you know, and rightly so, it's primarily data-driven, right? But at the same time, it, it almost seems like companies are trying to dumb it down. So they put a high emphasis on SOP. SOP, if you don't know, is Standard Operating Procedure, because they don't want people to deviate or get lost in their uh, work in their job description, right? They want you from point A to point B to point C to point D. So they're basically spelling out A, B, C, D, E, F, you know? And and before they hire you though, they, they vet you out and try to get the most suitable candidate, right? And and you get the most suitable candidate that's a good thinker, self-motivated, you know, uh, problem solver and all that. And then you dumb their role down. <laughs> so how stupid is that, right? You get these people that are supposed to excel for you and then you tell them what they need to do from A, B, C, D, E, F, G, you know? You don't need to pay top dollars, MBA degrees and blah, blah, blah for that. You just hire somebody and, and as long as they can follow directions, you know, uh, they don't deviate. They're just committed to the cause, you know, the A, B, C, D, E, F cause, right? Then then the company has succeeded in getting their candidate. Anyway, so um, also... The companies, their emphasis these days are more on uh, spreadsheets, charts, reports, uh, metrics. Um, it feels like the soul of the organizations are uh, sucked out, right? The, the, the life of the company is sucked out and they basically want to replace it all with uh, SOP, Standard Operating Procedure, and make everybody into like robots and just go ahead and go about your task, right? And uh, be as efficient as possible. And I think uh, one of the reactions that, that this causes with the employee 
employer relationship dynamic is that um, you get the company that is self-interested and they want you to fulfill certain roles like you know like a robot right and then you have from the employee side they're self-interested because they want to get what they were promised in terms of pay benefits vacation time pto all that stuff right they want what's owed them it's not so much about hey i'm gonna join your organization let's team up and let's make it successful together so the emphasis from the company's perspective is they do not want you to be a free thinker they don't want you to deviate from these sops right they want you to follow the standard operating procedure okay so people that used to you know make deals or uh you know if you had a certain situation you could go talk to your boss and they they'll understand and they'll make an exception and things like th those things don't happen as much now it's all about standard operating procedure so another thing that is cultivated in companies and organizations these days is the CYA mentality, you know, cover your ass, right? They, they tell you that you need to make sure that you don't compromise yourself, you know? A lot of times back in the day, people would protect the company, compromise themselves. They'll take a bullet, you know? They'll take a bullet for the cause, you know, not, 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 not literally, but you know, they'll, they'll take the heat for their team, their manager, or the manager will take one in the heat for their employee, um, uh, sometimes other departments will cover each other because they have a bond, they have a relationship. There is a sense of unity there, right? But the CYA mentality is like, cover your butt, cover your butt and make sure that nothing's your fault. Make sure that you're ready to throw everybody and anybody under the bus for you to survive. You got to make sure that nothing is your fault, right? That's playing the game well, you know? It's like the sleaziest way you want to succeed but this is what's being cultivated because if you don't play this game you're not going to survive so good people are forced to play this game and they compromise their morals and their values because for the sake of work for you to not lose your job you need to cya how ridiculous is that and the environment causes people to be more self-seeking to succeed than to focus on the success of the company right it's all about me first so what do you think about that do you agree or disagree i know that some of the Maybe the younger viewers, you won't have the context to compare to back in the day, right? But maybe some of you people that are 40, 50 and above um, will have that perspective to know, you know, whether it's better now or worse or, but better or worse, I think there's some things that are better and worse in both time periods. But I think that we should take the good from back in the day and from today and uh, try to avoid all of this uh, nonsense that's going on, in the, uh, you know, uh, with the new generation uh, work environment, right? So do you agree or disagree? Just wanted to know. Anyway, I feel like with trucking in the USA, uh, it still has its soul. Uh, but as the older generation is dying out, um, the newer generation has to carry that mantle. You know, let's see as the new drivers enter the market, how we do. I'm not talking about the rubbish parts because there's a lot of, like I said before, there's a lot of rubbish that went on and, and you know, truckers, uh, sometimes made we, we made a bad name for ourselves you know but uh, you know throw out the bad and you know and, and and try to cultivate the good right as the next generation of uh, drivers come in I'm, I'm an old guy so you know i don't even know if i fall into that next generation category but you know because i'm a new driver you know um, each individual driver will impact truck driving in america right oh anyway that was something i wanted to talk about and i wanted to try um so this week uh i did a lot of uh, back and forth from northern california and uh back to Southern California. And then uh, at the end of the week, um, I had a situation where I was gonna go one more time to Stockton and back, but uh, one of the older trailers that I was pulling, the tandems would not lock. You know, usually when you slide the tandems, uh, the locking mechanism will pop out. So it'll pop out and lock it in place. But uh, for whatever reason, it was uh, slightly crooked where it wasn't aligned straight you know, um, and so the locking mechanisms are supposed, if it, if it pops out in the third hole, it should be on the third hole in both. But for one, one reason or another, it was misaligned and it was an older trailer. And then um, also the handle that releases and locks the uh, tandem um, was also broken. So then my, my load couldn't go to Stockton. <laughs> so... Yeah, and it, it, I thought it was going to kill my week, but um, one of the guys I like working with, I don't even know if I should say his name, but Charlie, um, I, there you go, I said his name. <laughs> he, he's really like good. He's on top of it. And he went ahead and um, got me another assignment right away, took that assignment off. And so uh, uh, I ended up going to Phoenix and coming back. So it salvaged my week. 
and I ended up breaking 2400. If I didn't have that last load, the week would have ended ugly like a couple of weeks ago when uh, I had to stop at 1700 miles. It, was, it wasn't good. But this time I, I got over 2400 miles. Hopefully it gets reflected on my, <laughs> on my pay. You know, up until this point, I haven't had a problem with the pay. I'm sure it's one small clerical error, but uh, it, it does get under my skin. So it's bugging me and they better, they better uh, fix it and, uh, you know, pay the difference in, in the next paycheck or the paycheck after. Anyway, so um, I guess that's all I have for you guys this week. Uh, hopefully next week is, I'm still trying to break that 2,500 mile mark. Uh, hopefully I get uh, the right assignments and I could be on the ball and, and get, get over 2,500 miles next week. But uh, this is uh, Easter weekend, so happy Easter, everybody. Thank you for all your support. Peace, and I will catch you guys next time. Cheers.